The debut album from Dominic Fike is finally out. It's called What Could Possibly Go Wrong? And the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. There's a really interesting story, by the way, on how the album cover was made. Here to tell us more is one of the creatives behind it, well-known photographer in his own right as well, Daniel Prokopsik, as well as Misha Vladimirsky of Filterless. Welcome to you both. Uh, thanks, Pete. Well, we're here with uh, Daniel, um, a good friend of mine, uh, and hopefully yours soon, who um, is an amazing photographer based in L.A. now, but uh, is uh, via New York and Jersey, I think, um, who just completed uh, some really dope artwork photography for uh, Dominic Fike's new album that it just came out a few weeks ago. How, how did the collaboration actually come about? I mean, so you know, I, kind of yeah, I met him through a friend last year early last year and he actually was a huge John Mayer fan um as you know I, I went on tour with John Mayer for like two years and um he was like oh you got to come see my show I'd love you to, you to check it out so I went to the Echo in LA small place it must have been 40 people 50 people it wasn't that much at all and he crushed it it was awesome and I was like wow this kid's really good he's got he plays guitar he's got a band he kind of raps he almost has this like sublimey feel to it and I just kept in touch and just kept like hanging out with him and just going to the studio with him and doing stuff. And, you know, once the, the album started to take shape, I was like, wow, this kid is really, you know, crushing it and killing, you know, all these beats that he's been given. And it's just been awesome. He actually works with one producer, you know, he works with, writes his own stuff. He doesn't really outsource anything. And I think that's really admirable and awesome and I think the album came out great. I mean the cover art itself and the artwork behind it they they're not very simple the, you know the color and everything else like how did that actually um, come about um, and how was that process like it, it sounds like he's also probably involved in the creative process it doesn't seem like from the music and if he makes his own music he probably wants to be a part of the creative process how did that happen? Totally. So my, my good friend Reed is his creative director and we've been friends for a while and he had this idea to do a projection on a mountain. He was like, it'd be really cool. He like saw these guys that were doing these projections like, you know, it'd be really rad to do this. Let's try to go to Sweden or the Swiss Alps and like project something on the mountains. And I think it ended up being in um, Edinburgh in Scotland that they did it. And it was supposed to happen in March. Now with all this pandemic stuff, they didn't know what to do. They were like freaking out a little bit and they just ended up just shooting it out there and they shot it without Dom. And they projected this big, what could possibly go wrong on a mountain, did a time-lapse. They ended up doing a music video too for it, which was, came out amazing. It was like a lyrical video that was great. So then when they came back with it, Reed was like, yo, we really wanted to have Dom in it what can we do? And I was like, well, we can just match it. Let's just figure it out. So we went into the studio and, and him and I just, and Dom just right when the pandemic was really hitting, it was just, I think four of us. And we just sat there and just kind of got the light right, got everything perfect. And we kind of nailed it. You really, most of the time you can tell when you're Photoshopping stuff, as you know, but it's been really hard to tell for a lot of people that it was kind of placed in and comped in. Um, so I felt really proud of myself <laughs> that we matched the light and matched everything completely perfectly. And it felt really good and it looks really great. And, you know, when the, the vinyl comes out, there's actually all a lot of my photos in the pamphlet of the, in my lyrical sheet of all like recording at Shangri-La and recording, you know, at Conway Studios and just really the process. And it was fun to just be around all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of how, how it came together. Get how do you, how do you, um, w when the art direction is kind of given to you in that sense, how do you still kind of put your own spin on it? Cause I could feel it's one of your images, you know, like we've known each other for a long time and I've seen a lot of your work and I could tell you took the, the photo. So how does that work? You know, at least with this specific project. This one, you know, it was actually kind of tough to get that light right to match it the way that made it seem like it was mine. Um, but even just like dragging shutters and making sure that we can, you know, I do add that kind of, you know, creative aspect to it where he's like walking and kind of see a streak of, of it and like got, just getting the light the way it should be. Just, I don't know if it was me or my assistant or whatever it was, but <laughs> we did it perfectly. And I think 
it was a challenge, but also a collaboration with Reed and making sure that we got it right. I think Reed played such a big part in like making sure that like the light was even and the light that was like the red was perfectly matched to the other red and like all that kind of stuff, which was pretty great. We really didn't do that many like comps. I think someone just did it super quick and it was done. Like they didn't have to retouch anything, which again, I'm kind of proud of. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's always rare. Personal relationships actually do mean a lot in, in your line of work. It sounds like in our line of work where when you know somebody truly knows somebody and you get to know them through this process as you have, which is, you started at zero when he was playing rooms of 40 people. And now he's what the, the one of the faces of Mark Jacobs at one point, what, what was the big, he just had that big campaign and stuff and everybody wants a piece of him, but you actually know him. So is, is that part of your creative process? Cause I've also seen a lot of your work and how it's evolved. Yeah. I think it's, I think you have to, if you want to get the real version of him, I think you kind of have to know him and know, what he's gone through and know his life story and know, you know, how he feels about certain looks and certain things. And just, you get better stuff by being a friend versus being just the guy who just shows up. And I've been in those situations where you're the guy that just shows up and it's difficult to like, they think that, you know, they need to look a certain way to, in a photo where, you know, Dom just is himself and I can just photograph whatever it is. And that to me is way better than having someone be forced to look a certain way. On your social, there's, you know, some, some really great intimate moments of, of, of Dominic and it probably is from you knowing him. How did these come about? And, you know, one specific one is the him and the ghost um, image or towel. <laughs> so the ghost image is, a cr it's crazy. We, so my friend Jesse and I have been looking for a studio together and he ended up, having to find one and live in one. And he got it from this artist named Steve Nash. And Steve is a, a big artist who makes these ghosts. And when I needed a place to shoot and we didn't want to go to somewhere that was being used a lot, just like, just shoot it here. Like, it's fine. So I, sh I sent a photo to Reed and Reed was like, oh my gosh, like the, the whole album thing is a ghost orchid. Like the whole like logo because it's only native to Naples, Florida, or only to Florida. And um, he was like, this fits in perfectly. Can we use them to shoot stuff? I asked Steve and he was like, no problem. It's, it's cool. Go for it. And he just, he was there and he just set up all the ghosts and it just came out really rad. But some of the, the more intimate moments was just like, one was in New York when he was recording. I just went out there and just hung out in New York and he was just, I think he was doing that vampire song, which was amazing. And he was just tired and was laying on the ground. And by some grace of God, he was laying by like the album cover name, which had no purpose being there. And he didn't even notice, um, which is really funny. And then most of it's just in the studio and just being in with, you know, documenting that process and documenting him, you know, figuring out, a guitar lick or whatever it is. And I think that that's so interesting and important. You know, all the famous photographers, like we said, Jim Marshall and whatever are just, they're always in those perfect moments of Jimi Hendrix lighting a guitar on fire or Jimi Hendrix, you know, backstage in that moment of trying to prepare for a huge show. Like that's where I want to be. And that's where I feel like I was with Dom, which is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Cool. Yeah, this is great.